Hey, my name is Kelly Chappelle. Thanks for tuning into this video about phage complementation testing. This video is made for Bio 305 at the University of Michigan, which is Introduction to Genetics. So let's get started. Here's the quick and dirty. This video is going to contain information about complementation testing generally. Then we're going to compare complementation to recombination testing. And then we're going to give an example about lambda phage. Um, lambda is this really cool Greek signal that looks like an upside down Y. Uh, in case you're not familiar with it, because I wasn't. I was like, oh, that's cool. Okay. Cool, complementation testing. So what is it? Complementation testing is a way to test whether or not two genes are the same. So if you see something, so like let's say that we have a plate and we infect it with a virus and they all die. Um, but sometimes some colonies of bacteria don't die. But you wanna know, is this resistant? Is this resistance between various colonies part of the same mutant gene? Or are they different genes? Well, we can do that using complementation testing. So how do you do it? Well, you cross two mutants at a high MOI and observe the F1 progeny, okay? So this is just, you should remember this for sure. Um, and then how do you interpret the results? Well, if the F1 is wild type, then we're dealing with two different genes, okay? So let's say that we're dealing with the A gene, the A gene cross the B gene mutant of the B gene, okay? So you'd write it like this, because remember, this is one gene, this different gene. Okay? So if they are two different genes, then you'd write it like this. And the progeny from this cross would look like what? The A plus plus B, right? So, right, because we're getting this from one, this from, let's say this is mom, this from mom, and this from dad, so it would be this. Okay, and remember, this is wild type, so if they're two different genes, this looks wild type, okay? But if the F1 is mutant, then we're dealing, right, so this is the F1. If we're dealing with two alleles of the same gene, so how would we write that notation. Well, we're dealing with two alleles of the same gene, so we're dealing with like A1 over A, oops, sorry, over an A1 plus plus cross A2, or yeah, A2 plus plus, right? So these are two different alleles, different alleles of the same gene and that results in a1 plus right so here we go mom a2 plus this is dad and this is going to be a mutant because we're different alleles of the same gene okay so this is not wild type because this means that this has to be dominant because this looks like a mutant, looks mutant. Or like even you can think about this and just like not even consider the wild types here, but like this looks like mutant one, this looks like a mutant, therefore if you combine these two it's gonna still look like a mutant. So why is this? Why does this work? Hang on, let me check what the next, well here we just, we actually just went through this, right? So. If you cross the same gene, actually, no, I'm not even going to go over this again. We just went through this. If you're so confused, then look back at your notes or shoot me an email. So complementation testing in phage. So how do we do this? Well, remember, this is on the first slide. We're going to isolate two mutant phage, two phage that have the same phenotype because we want to see if it's caused by this, the same gene or different genes. So, for example, here we're going to look at two phages that produce slow lysis. And then we're going to have the two phages simultaneously the same bacteria at high MOI. So we want to see if recombination occurs. So obviously, if you just do one phage per bacteria, we're not going to have uh, recombination because there's only one. So you need to have at a high MOI to allow recombination to occur. So let's see. So we have our bacteria. So this is the bacteria. And here is what would happen if this was on two different genes, okay? So we have this phage, and we have A minus and B 
plus, and here we have this phage injects A plus and B minus. So let's say that the B gene, so B plus equals production of the square protein, and A plus is production of the circular protein. So if we were just looking at this phage all alone, would it produce, it, this one wouldn't produce the circular protein because A is mutated, but it would produce the square protein by itself, which is because we have the wild type B. And this one, this produces the circular protein because A is working, but it doesn't produce the square protein because the B is not working. But look, look what happens when we cross these. Look what the cross looks like. Well, if they're on separate, if they're if they're separate genes, then if, when you cross them, when crossed, you should see C wild type. Okay, because remember, keep in mind, what is the wild type? Well, that's A plus B plus. So that means produces oops, produces functional. circle and squares, but here we have functional circle and squares because they complement one another. And I forgot to explain this. Complementation testing, you can remember, is if you're looking at the same and different because if they complement one another, we're dealing with two different genes. Okay, if they complement, we're dealing with two different genes and you want to give, you want to complement someone else. You don't want to complement yourself. Okay, so if they complement, then they are different genes. Okay. So, and then third, we're going to look at the outcome. So if slow lysis is the mutant, so let's say slow lysis, lysis occurs when you don't have both, when you're lacking a circle or a square, then you have the mutant phenotype, which means that it did not complement because it is the same gene, okay? But if you have normal lysis, like what we looked at here, if you have both circle and square proteins, then it shows the wild type, like we looked at here, and they did complement, and therefore are on different genes. So really, the big takeaway is memorize this table, and you'll be fine. <laughs> so let's compare complementation versus the recombination test. So the last video about phage was about recombination tests, and you're probably like, hang on, a lot of these questions are like kind of similar, but they're like kind of different. How do I keep this straight in my mind? Well, here are the big differences. So complementation testing, you are using it to see whether two mutations are on the same or different genes. But recombination tests are used to see the distance between genes, okay? You could also use complementation tests to see the difference between two genes if they determine that they're on different genes, but generally the questions are asked in terms of same or different. How do you do the methods? Well, on a complementation test, you only do one infection and you only infect at once at a high MOI because all you care about is if recombination occurs or if it didn't. Now, if there were combination tests, you do two infections. The first one is to infect at a high MOI to see if recombination occurred or to like make sure that recombination occurred. And then second, you're going to infect at a low MOI. So this is to see what kind of recombination occurred. Okay, so you're going to count the number of a particular phenotype and see if rec whether recombination actually occurred. So in a complementation test, what do you look for in the outcome? Well, you're going to be looking for whether you have mutant or wild type phenotype in the progeny. And then you use, you use math based on this, this outcome to determine the distance between genes. But if you're doing a recombination test, all you're doing is looking for the wild type phenotype to figure out the distance between genes. And remember that it was accounted for in how we calculated the, dis the number of centimorgans for that. If you don't remember how this happens, then go back and rewatch that video. Now, why would you use a complementation test? Well, it's useful to see if we're doing, if we're dealing with the same gene, and if we determine that they're on different genes, then we can measure the distance between them, which we use this equation for. But in a recombination test, unless we're trying to determine, uh, it's useless if we're trying to determine the distance between genes, or distance between the same genes, because obviously it's zero. Because if you have like gene A and gene B, but they're actually just in the same place, and really they're just one gene. So what is the distance between genes equation here? Complementation test is two times the number of wild type over the titer, which we'll go, go through in a second. And a recombination test is two times single recombinants plus two times double recombinants over the titer. So let's do an example with 
Lambda Phage. So Lambda Phage looks like that. Look at that beautiful phage. I'm going to draw a smiley face in the phage. <clears throat> and this shows uh, various infections. Oops, sorry. Shows various infections. So here we see the plus or minus represents the phage. And this, the B or the K, represents the type of bacteria it's plated on. Type of bacteria. Okay, so if we were going to perform this experiment, we'd have a nice little Petri dish. Okay, so we have our Petri dish. And in that Petri dish, we have a lawn of bacteria. So because bacteria are kind of grody, I'm going to color this off in green. Okay? We have a lawn of bacteria. And into that Petri dish, we inject some phage. I, you know, I don't actually work in a lab that does this, so I have no idea how they do that. I don't know, like, just pour it on or whatever. So here's, I don't know, here's a pipe header. Cool, that's a really fantastic pipe header. And here we go, phage, phage, a little phage. Look at my fantastic drawing of a phage. Little phage is going in there. Okay, so this is what's going on. So in this one, we're going to plus we're going to put the wild type phage in, and then these cells here are going to be B, B strain, B strain bacteria. I have no idea what a B strain is. I probably should know. Um, and what you should know here is this over here on the side that a wild type infects both E. coli strains B and K, whereas the mutant wild, the mutant wild type, excuse me, the mutant uh, phage only infects E. coli of strain B. So what happens if you infect a... Um, if you infect B strain bacteria with a wild type phage, because wild type infects both B and K, the phenotype is going to be lysis because it's going to kill all of these because the phage will infect. Okay, and similarly, if you if you put wild type phage on K cells because wild type infects both B and Ks, it'll result in a plaque because there'll be lysis. It'll kill that back, all the bacteria. So if you take the mutant, so this is means mutant, mutant. And you plate it on B cells, then you'll also have lysis because mutants killed B cells. But if you take the mutant and plate it on K cells, then there's going to be no lysis or no plaques because mutants don't infect K cells. So what happens if we combine these together? So what if we take the, the wild type phage and we plate it on B and K cells, okay? Well, then, because the wild type can infect both B and K, B and K cells, in fact, then you also have lysis or a plaque because both B and K are infected. But what happens if you take the mutant strain and you put it on B and K cells? Well, you get cloudy plaques because only the B is infected, K remains. So half of them are dying, but the other half stay. So it creates kind of an intermediary, which we call cloudy plaques. And so, like, it's, here's our plate. This is for top-down view. And here's a plaque. A cloudy plaque would look kind of like this. So the, the clear areas, clear areas... That's where the B cells were, because mutants only affect strain B. And this little spot here, the like spotty parts of the plaques, that is K cells, because those are not infected by the mutant strain. So, we're going to look at the observed outcome, okay? So, here's the observed outcome of the plate. Of the plate. So, if the plate is completely clear, then that means that both B and K are killed, so the result after we cross them is complementation occurred. Okay, that means that the two different uh, the two different genes that we're looking at the the wild type gene that kills that infects strains B and K, and then the mutant strain those are two different genes. Okay, so lambda A and lambda B. Now, if we observe cloudy, then that means that we only see we see in, in this cross. We see the the mutant mutant phenotype, the mutant phenotype, okay? And the mutant phenotype, which we determined right up here, was cloudy plaques. So that means that only B was killed, which is the mutant phenotype, therefore complementation did not occur, and they are in fact the same gene. So alleles of the same gene. So here I might write that as lambda A1 and lambda uh, A. Two. I don't know why I wrote B1. This should actually be lambda A2. Okay? Cool. So here's the behind the scenes. So how did we actually get through that? Well, how did that actually happen? Well, I drew it out a little bit, but here's the method. So we're going to combine two lambda 
page at high MOI. So I'm a super visual learner, so I always like to draw this out. So here we have our high, or here, let's just draw our plate first. So we have our plate, and on our plate we have, we have, uh, we have our B cells, B cells, and we're going to plate, in, onto this plate, we're going to put lambda A and lambda B at high MOI. Okay, so after these infect, we're going to get a plate that looks kind of like this, where we have plaques, clear plaques, where things have been infected, and then around those plaques we have our bacterial lawn. Okay? So here are our plaques, the plaque. Well, we're going to steal, we're going to take our new baby phages, which are living in the plaques, because that's when the bacteria were killed, and plate at low MOI on B cells and K cells. Oh, excuse me, hang on. I just realized I did this like way too large. On B cells and K cells, okay? So here's our plate. Okay, here's another plate. Okay, and on this plate we have our B cells. And on this plate we have our K cells. So we're gonna plate our phages here. These are our baby phages. And then we're going to observe the outcome, okay? So, the reason why we do our B cells is to determine how many baby phages we have via the titer, because like all of them, whether it's not a wild type or mutant, will grow on B cells. But then we put it on K cells to see if they're separate genes, because if A and B are separate genes, then recombination will occur, so the wild type phenotype will reemerge, and they'll be able to live on K cells. This is the complementation test. But if they're on the same gene, or if they are alleles of the same gene, then obviously recombination won't occur, and you'll just end up with a mutant which only can infect strain B. So what you'll see, if it is a, if they are different genes, you'll see wild types, so we'll see plaques. But if it is the same gene, we'll see, nothing will die, so we'll see a lawn. So, here are the results. So we did this experiment. Voila! Magic! This happened. And we, we observe our titer is 10 to the 5th phage per uh, microliter. And then the number of wild type observed were 10 to the 4th number of wild type phage. So, the first question is, are these two different genes or two alleles of the same gene? Well, remember we observe, if it's different genes, we're going to see plaques which uh, indicates the wild type, and they, we see that the wild type has reemerged. So if we see the wild type, that means they complemented, so they are therefore on different genes. So remember, that's, that's that table you want to memorize. Okay, and then if they are on different genes, which they are, what is the distance between them? So to calculate the distance between genes, we're going to use this handy-dandy equation. Um, I don't know about you, but this green is getting kind of depressing. I'm going to switch to a slightly brighter color. Okay, so that's 2 times the number of wild type over the titer times 100. So that's pretty helpful. Set of Morgans equals 2 times the number of wild type, which, thank you, and the problem they kindly give us is 2 times 10 to the 4th over the titer, which also they helpfully give us is 10 to the 5th, and then times 100. So, if I do this using my handy-dandy calculator, which is not a graphing calculator because you can't use a graphing calculator on these exams, uh, it is... Oh, wait, hang on. Did I not write this down correctly? Two times... Yes, no, I did. I did write it down correctly. Two times two e to the fourth. Okay, divided by ten to the fifth times one hundred comes out to be, hang on, what? I have, yes, comes out to be 40 centimorgans. Okay, perfect. So the answer here is 40 centimorgans. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully this was helpful, and hopefully I will see you in future videos. Good luck in genetics.